To mention going on the Cabot Trail, one of the most revered landmark routes in Nova Scotia, makes one begin to imagine many things at once. Fairy tale settings of nature, exotic river spots, and fantasy beautiful sunsets that linger in the eyes long after the sun has gone. Our expectations were not only met, but surpassed in many wondrous ways. We're about to embark on the Cabot Trail here in Nova Scotia. The Cabot Trail is single-handedly the crown jewel of Nova Scotia, and the only way to enjoy it is on a beautiful sunny day like this one. But of course, in order to start our journey, we have to cross this small body of water, and the only way to do that is by the English Town Cable Ferry. It's a short ride, but it's a nice one, and it gives you the homely feeling that you're in Nova Scotia. The journey to Cabot Trail's most populated and expressive run begins with a very unique travel method. On this ferry, whose task will be to course through a small distance on water to the next stop. The ferry, particularly the English Town Cable Ferry, is a very busy transport all year. The distance that it traverses from one edge of the land to another may not be as wide, but it is definitely one that covers a lot of depth. The ferry transports vehicles and of course many busy feet across the brief expanse of the sea lying between the two alluring pieces of land. Its main task is taking people on tour and business to the mainland where they set foot on the part of the Cabot Trail that winds through Smoky Mountain. While only a few minutes long journey, the gentle undulations and the backdrop scenery make for a very silent, calm experience. We've started our journey on the Cabot Trail and we're in the midst of two mountains. One, Smoky Mountain, and the other one, Mackenzie Mountain. Smoky Mountain got its name from it having a tendency to catch fire every few years. Right now, 160 meters above sea level, we are at a viewpoint, one of the many on Cabot Trail. And really, the views are indescribable. Saying the Cabot Trail is scenic is understating the quiet and tranquil magnificence. Since embarking on the point of the trail running through Smoky Mountain, we saw nothing but stunning landscapes, lush valleys, picturesque waterfalls, and clean, fresh plant life. While revered for the beauty it unveils with each and every turn, the Cabot Trail is one of two trunk highways in Nova Scotia that carries no signed route designation. It is one of the chief roadways in Atlantic Canada and very significant to the province of Nova Scotia. Due to its demographic situation, the Cabot Trail is frequented by visitors and people on business alike. Located on the tourist landmark Cape Breton Island, 
it calls Victoria and Inverness counties its immediate home, traversing in a loop of up to 300 kilometers, passing through the majestic beauty of Cape Breton Highlands. Along with the wonderful views on Cap Trail, there's also fantastic beaches. This is Inganis Beach, one of the best beaches in all of Nova Scotia. Over to my right is Celtic Lodge, which is a historic resort. And beyond Celtic Lodge is the Highlands Golf Course, which is considered the number one ranked golf course in all of Canada. It's clear to me that Nova Scotia has the best of everything. At first sight, Inganish Beach may appear to be like any typical beach. However, its surrounding versatility is what separates it from conventional tourist landmarks. With the flowing surf of the mighty Atlantic Ocean touching its reclining sands, calm evening, and in the background, the rising cape and the welcoming Celtic Lodge, making the beach one of few uniquely situated tourist spots on Earth. There's nothing like enjoying the historic Celtic Lodge here in Nova Scotia. Its original building was constructed in 1940, but that was torn down. The current building behind me was erected in 1951. And it remains today the restaurant and resort area for all to enjoy. In its history, the Celtic Lodge had seen some pretty prominent guests, including the Crown Prince of Japan. The lodge is encompassed by the view of the Atlantic and the rising Cape Smoky, adding to the breathtaking brilliance of the spot. By any chance, if the locale is not enough to appease the most adventurous of minds, the amenities more than make up for it. The golf courses, the lush meadow-like greenery, complement the lodge's almost fantasy setup. Indeed, it affords every sense, every appreciative eye, the impression and feeling of a getaway that is both peaceful and affords the ideal recreational opportunities. Whether it is a day of relaxing golf at any of the well-groomed courses or a visit to any of the many side attractions, the lodge's vicinity and surrounding areas offer everything a holiday goer can ask for, and more. For them, this luxury is very close to poetry in motion. Some people may be wondering where the name Cabot Trail came from. Well, it originated from the explorer John Cabot. In 1497, he set sail from Bristol, England, and was looking for a western passage to Asia. Well, fortunately, North Cape Breton got in his way, but also it was the result of him discovering North America. It's this memorial here that commemorates that important event in history. At the village of Cape North, the road divides. While Cabot Trail continues east, a second road veers to the north to Cabot's Landing Provincial Park. Here on this long sandy beach at the foot of Sugarloaf Mountain, a monument commemorates John Cabot's arrival in North America. Not only does the trail offer a first-hand view of the highlands, 
but also of the more concealed inland gifts of nature. This waterfall is only one of so many that are generously spread across the trail, replenishing both the plant and animal life, thereby sustaining a crucial balance and adding to the welcoming temperature climate that has become the trademark of this colorful landscape. The trail runs close to the ocean as it winds through the land's many tapestries that also include breathtaking views of valleys and lakes, two of which are Marjorie River Valley and Bador Lake. Along Cabot's Trail, there are many small fishing towns, one of them being Neal's Point, which is where we are right now. These small towns are, are great ways to catch your breath and recharge your batteries on this long trail. After all, Cabot's Trail can take up to about two days to complete. While you're in one of these small towns, you can enjoy the local seafood, the scenery, and as I mentioned, kick your feet up and relax. Neal's Harbour was first occupied by Newfoundlanders of Irish and English descent who were engaged in the seasonal fisheries. Each spring, fishermen left their homes in Newfoundland to fish off these rich banks. Eventually, they made a permanent move to the area ferrying families and household goods across the Cabot Strait. These small residential towns and village presences may be described as a case, if ever, of smaller parts amounting to a greater whole. These may be small places and their visual image low-key and approach, dated and traditional, but their significance both in terms of ecological and social, economic and demographic terms, is appreciated by this illustrious, growing province. The towns, though, known for their fisheries, are also an ideal refuge for the private and isolated individual. With nothing but the soft padding of gulls' feet and spectacular views of the harbor and sea life, complemented by balmy nights and soft sunsets, the villages are a treat to the eye and a boon for many a low-key, peace and quiet craving individuals. Another one of the small towns along the way, off the track of the Cabot Trail, is Meat Cove. You may be wondering, where can the name Meat Cove come from? Well, if you look at those mountains in the background, it was once thought that the natives would run the buffalo off the mountains, and then this town here would have an excess of meat, hence Meat Cove. When people come here, they usually stop, and they stop for a while because of the views and the beach and the peacefulness. It's all here in Meat Cove. If you manage to stay for a little while, there's Meat Cove Lodge down at the end of the road. You can stay there in a peaceful, rustic, cottage-type setting. You can't help but stop for a while here in Meat Cove. You'd be surprised here in Meat Cove. The majority of people here are of Scottish descent, mainly one family that has been here for five generations. Located in the Federal Electoral District of Sydney, Victoria, Meat Cove, though equipped with modern amenities, is still perceived as one of the old-fashioned villages. Although visually isolated, Meat Cove has had its share of visitors and tourists, some of which include U.S. and Canadian residents who lived there for length at a time. 
True to its billing as a rural area, Meat Cove is approachable only by an unpaved path. At the end of the path, a silent community of no more than 150 folks inhabit the village. About halfway through your trip on the Cabot Trail, there's an opportunity that comes across maybe once in a lifetime. A very special opportunity. That's whale watching. When you find the right spot, there are many companies to choose from. And what they'll do is they'll get you on one of these fishing boats and they'll take you out to the Atlantic Ocean where you'll have uh, the opportunity to look at a few different types of whales. They're hard to come by, but when you see them, you'll enjoy yourself. Two different types of whales that you might see might be mink whales, or pilot whales. This small harbor and boating front is preparing teams of people to indulge in perhaps a once in a lifetime opportunity to see in person one of nature's most gentle and astoundingly large and agile creatures. No one can refute the majesty and grace of these huge sea mammals, scientifically categorized as cetaceans belonging to the family of dolphins and porpoises, whales have always been fascinating. Even those who have beheld their magnificence in person are awed, even when seeing them a second time. The deep waters of Cabot Trail's Pleasant Bay are an ideal frequented spot for these colossal seafaring mammals. This provides a golden opportunity to see whales when they appear in these waters. Although a regular visiting spot for at least 16 species of whales, the most well-known belong to the bigger family. Humpbacks, almost 16 meters long, are unique for this underbelly segmented design. Although huge when comprehended by the eye, they dwarf in comparison to the finback whales that can achieve lengths of even 27 meters. Readily overwhelming on television or in pictures, they are truly a sight to behold in Pleasant Bay. Communicating through unique emissions of sounds that are perfected into recognizable signatures, whales have also afforded room for ample scientific research, particularly in echolocation and sonar capabilities, both of which are potent tools for a whale to use to discern oncoming objects, small particles, fish, and barriers in their path. The sound emitted bounces off objects and returns to them, giving them a clear view. The team members of MTA International Canada Studios certainly had their fill of discovery and excitement seeing these wonderful seafarers firsthand. This community is also referred to as a whale-loving community. A passion to learn about these creatures is not very hard to inspire, particularly if they are capable of displaying such inquisitive traits. This tour is over, but more than answer the questions, it seems many more have come up. They will have to be answered another day. Located in Pleasant Bay, Nova Scotia, the Buddhist Abbey is far placed from the central home of Buddha, but the bond bred of spirituality in those that subscribe to the doctrine is evident in this small yet cozy abbey. Founded in 1984 to preach the Buddhist faith, 
the Abbey has been home to all visitors, Buddhist or not. The Buddhist Abbey serves as a center in North America and would observe the traditions of Tibetan Buddhism. The Abbey is associated with the Vajrahatu Buddhist Church of Canada also, providing the gateway for streamlining the teachings and traditions for those who are beginning to experience Tibetan Buddhism. Offering the daily amenities of one who wishes to learn about the Buddhist faith, the Abbey is both informative and set in tones of a mild and welcoming homely atmosphere, a tradition they have worked hard to keep going. Complete with a meditative floor space and traditional decorum and ornaments, the residents of the Abbey have kept their hearts close to home. The view of the ocean adds to the simple, peaceful atmosphere. Beit al-Hafiz Mosque is the only Ahmadiyya mosque in the jurisdiction. Located in the sleepy town of Sydney, the mosque is home to about 11 Ahmadi families who come here to pray and hold meetings or conventions. Conveniently located adjacent to the main town of Glace Bay, Ahmadi families are at much convenience when coming to the mosque, since work locations, shopping facilities, and even the airport are only a mere 10 to 20 minutes away. Being here on the edge of Canada in Sydney, Nova Scotia, it's clear that the Ahmadi Muslim Jamaat has let thy message reach the corners of the earth. Here, they have Beit al-Hafiz Mosque, which is the headquarters in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And over to my left, they've purchased a new piece of property that will be known as the Mission House. To find out more about the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat's connection here in Nova Scotia, let's talk to President of Sydney, Nova Scotia's Jamaat. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? That's good. How was your journey? Good, good, good journey. So, uh, Dr. Zab, tell me about uh, the Sydney Jamaat. The Sydney Jamaat is about uh, 10 years old. Before that, I was the only one in this part of the province of the world, only me and Raza Qureshi in Halifax. Somehow, with the grace of Allah, we have a Jamaat which is small, but most of the Jamaat members are doctors. Out of that, I should say majority are female. So, mashallah, we have created a Sydney Jamaat in such a way that we have bought a, a mosque, and this year we bought a, a small mission house next door. The mosque may be styled with simplicity, but it is very functional in that it serves the overall purpose for Ahmadis who wish to pray or perform other tasks for the Jamaat. One advantage of holding meetings comes from it being soundproof from the inside. Whether it is the common meeting or gathering area, the children's section or the lajna section, meetings and gatherings or moreover, prayers are observed with the expedient, quiet atmosphere. The mosque also offers standard mission house facilities, making it possible to carry all work under its roof, affording the convenience of a prayer center and activity center in one. The Cabot Trail's many turns and swerves provided nothing but new sights, fresh sceneries, and more aspects of nature's beauty, complexity, and power.
It showed the best Cape Breton and the province of Nova Scotia had to offer. With the power of the Atlantic surrounding it that humbles the boldest to the quiet existence of its many fishing towns that will soothe the most aggressive of senses, Nova Scotia should be the next destination for any aspiring traveler, lover of nature, and vacationer. We will see you there with the sun's light in your eyes and the power of the surf in your heart and mind.